All right, we are live. This is the Group Sales Power Hour. We're excited to have Catherine here. I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself in just a moment. But friends, you know, before you start any kind of a live broadcast, you know, whether you're getting on stage, giving a little speech there, or you're going to do a Zoom call, you got to get in early, test out the systems. And as Catherine and I were just discussing, expect something to go wrong because if it does it's like okay i'll handle it and if it doesn't it's victory so what I mean, what just happened like four minutes before showtime Catherine, just share it with us <laughs> four minutes before showtime here i am sitting in my nice little office i've got my lights set up i've got my camera i've got another light over there I've got my space heater going because it's freezing cold and all of a sudden poof it's gone. My screen goes blank. My lights go off. My space heater shows off. I blew a fuse. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so wow. up I go into the laundry room to flip the switch and yeah. then scramble to get back on because um, all my other stuff on my computer had gone blank. So I had to reboot everything. Yeah. So well, there you go. I, I must commend you. Cool as a cucumber. I, I, uh, cucumber. I said cool as a cuke. I think that's the expression. You're back. We're back. Thank you, Hans, who's always in early and confirmed that that I was still up and running and I knew you'd be back in. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, this episode. Our our topic, our focus is lead magnets. And we've got the lead magnet expert in the studio here. A couple of quick announcements. If, if this is your first time being in the audience, uh, first time being in the audience, let your fingers do the typing. So please go ahead and, and, and feel free to type in comments, questions, observations, so forth and so on. Uh, if you like my hat, let me know. Catherine, just so you know, I've been, I made a pledge. I would wear a different hat every podcast or every recording. And I'll let you know when I, I repeat, I haven't repeated them yet. Not yet, wow. but, but I do have a couple of ski caps. So, you know, <laughs> I never said they would be dress hats. The other thing I want to let you know is that uh, there are two handouts that are attached. And if you're listening to this as a podcast, the links will be in the show notes. But if you're here right now, I don't want you to mess around with your computer if you're uncomfortable doing a download while we're here in the discussion. But just know, don't log out until you download both. And, and Catherine's going to tell you about the, the one that uh, that I have from her that's loaded up. Uh, our mission here is to help you, dear travel advisors, to build a bigger, better group business. And beyond a shadow of a doubt, my friends, groups have always been or has always been. I'm not sure, Catherine, but I'll just run with it. The, the, the most lucrative, satisfying opportunity for a group travel business. And even though we're in a bit of a slump right now, none of our fault, it's going to come back bigger and better than ever before. So right now is the time to get your game, get your game and be ready. If you're not ready, you're going to miss it. If you're ready, you're, you're going to come out on top. Catherine, would you please take a minute, introduce yourself. Uh, all I'm going to say is uh, I've been friends with Catherine for, for a long time now. And Catherine is absolutely, unequivocally committed, dedicated to you, travel advisors, because, uh, it, and, and not only dedicated to you, but <clears throat> Catherine, your specialty, Catherine, is in an area that so many entrepreneurs are very uncomfortable with, which is social media, social marketing, and that's what you do. So get, please give us your, your elevator speech, and then we're gonna, we're gonna dive into lead magnets. Great, thanks, Stuart. It's great to be here. I um, am the owner and founder of Customized Management Solutions, so I help take the mystery and mayhem out of social marketing. My background is total travel and tourism. I was a travel advisor back in my hometown of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Worked for inbound and outbound tour companies, hotels, uh, you name it, and I've kind of been there. And then 
Back in 2009, when social marketing came onto the scene, I decided to uh, go work for myself. And now I just speak and train just in social marketing and just in the tourism and travel industry. So it's a great place to be. And it is so exciting because things change all the time. So it's great to um, be able to share some things with everybody today. So thank you, Stuart. Yep, terrific. I appreciate you giving us your time today. And I just want to acknowledge uh, we've got a great audience. Hans, Danny, Ramona, Karen D, Michael K, Trinita. We've got a, a great, uh, we're really loaded up today, which is great. And as you're coming in, remember, go ahead and type in any comments or questions or share your successes or failures here. And I'll, I'll do my best, Catherine, to read these as we go along. Uh, and I do have some some updates, but I'm, I'm going to save them for a few minutes. So here's how I want to kick off. <laughs> Karen D, who's a boot camper, she's also coming to my mastermind. Is that I, I just have, awesome? Yeah. So yeah, I, I just her. have to read this. All right, Karen, I'm going to read what she sent in. Yeah. Several weeks ago, I asked if we could talk about lead magnets, and we did on one of your calls. Overall, I was very disappointed because I heard the same weak suggestion I heard all year, a packing list. I'm reading, I'm reading your words, Karen. Really? Surely we can do better than that. I live in an affluent town. My clientele is mature, well-traveled, well-educated. Would they really be excited about receiving a packing list? I don't think so. <laughs> so I thought this was brilliant. All right, first, take a moment, please, and define for us what, what a lead magnet is so we understand what it is what the purpose of it is and and then we're going to start getting into some some details we'll really get granular here because i want everyone who's listening now to, to to take notes and say oh i didn't think of that i can do that or i understand the whole process that it's not just about uh, uh you know it's not just about getting new leads, but it's about bringing them through. A, it's a whole process. It's a, it's sort of a funnel. And I, I want to make sure everyone leaves comfortable and understanding with it. So please explain. Great. So a lead magnet, how I like to think about it, it's like that carrot that it, people hang out there for you. So the carrot is something that is so remarkable, so invaluable that your clients or potential clients just have to have it. So while it might not be a packing list for Karen, it could be something else. And I've got a whole list of things, plus we get to brainstorm today about Good. what that carrot might be. So once you create this carrot, then you put it out there and people will then, in exchange for this carrot, give you their email address. So I, I jotted down three kind of steps and I just drew a quick picture today because the three steps are really simple. You have to come up with the idea first, which okay. is what we're going to talk about today. Then you have to build the thing that you're going to give away. You have to build that carrot. Right. And then the next step is to market that carrot. Yep. So today I thought we'd start by talking about what that carrot might be, because I saw that email from Karen as well. <laughs> and I agree, we can do far better than a packing list because there's Absolutely. tons of them out there already. So let's just start, Stuart, with brainstorming a little bit. What might be, and if you want to type in the chat box, what the top destinations are that you sell or top experiences that you sell in your group tours? So just type those in, you know, is it is it Israel? Is it Napa? Is it whatever? Type those in and then start. If you can read some of those off to me, that'll help as we try and brainstorm other ideas that you can use for okay. a lead magnet. All right, everybody start typing in and I'm just going to read here a couple of thoughts that Karen had shared. Uh, and then, oh, here, here they come. Everyone's typing in. Please share this. Uh, so. Uh, Karen had said uh, adventure travel, okay. family travel, single travel, multi-generational. Okay. Michelle has typed in Australia and New Zealand. Okay. Michael, Italy, wine and, and cuisine, small groups. Okay. 
Lynn, Israel, Greece, Ramona, Cancun. Okay. Uh, Jeanette, north coast of the Dominican Republic, hidden gems. Oh, okay. So All I'm right. I'm going to keep going, and and I, I know there's a lot here, but but I want to just I want to just um, acknowledge what everybody's typing in. So I'm going to keep going. This is very exciting. I I love to see this level of engagement. Karen writes in Italy, London, Paris. Lynn adds culinary tours, Hans, river cruises. Linda, Mexico. Um, and, and Michael came back and said Italy, but not Venice, Florence, and Rome. So he's going a little off the beaten path. Danny, who is a big fan of yours, who works with you, uh, is just singing your praises here in the chat box. Thank you, Danny. Yeah. Danny, I'll, I'll see you in Cancun in, in, in like a couple of weeks, uh, cruising the Douro River. Oh, uh, great. Sheila also says river cruising and expedition cruising. Cheryl says South Africa. Danny says photography workshop. So I'm going to stop there because we, we could be here for the whole day, which which would be fun. But I'll let you take it and, and you know, pick some that you want to focus on. OK, these are awesome. Thank you so much, because what we're going to do with these ideas is again brainstorm some things that would be useful for people that are interested or potentially interested in traveling to these areas so we're not even going to start with the packing list so in this guide that you had that i um, put together for you in there is some content ideas for lead magnets so if we're going to do let's take italy because i love italy so okay. it could be an art history cheat sheet Italian art history cheat sheet. So think about all the great art that's in Italy. And maybe you make this cheat sheet the top 10 things that people never go to see in Italy. Hmm. Because we need to think about what's going to be valuable, but what's something different than what's already out there. Because anybody can go to Pinterest and look at all the great infographics or great things to download on Pinterest. But we need to be creating something that's different, that's going to stand out from the other things that are already out there. So the more granular, granular you can get, the better. So like the one fellow who said he wasn't doing tours to Venice and Rome, he was doing tours to off the beaten path destinations. So then maybe that becomes the focus of a lead magnet, off the beaten path tours to Italy or off the beaten path sites to see in Italy. Or the person who was talking about cuisine, maybe that becomes decadent desserts to sample in whatever destination that is, whether it's Italy or Greece or wherever. Or the other thing that people talked about was food and culinary tours. And I'm sure along with that goes wine tasting and um, other adult beverage tasting. Yes. So we could do a whole series of lead magnets on that topic alone. We could do the 10 top distilleries to visit in South Africa. The right. 10 top wineries off the beaten path in Italy. And so think about each facet of what you're selling and what your people are going to be seeing on your group tour. And then think about how you could create some something that's going to be valuable for them. Wouldn't it be helpful as I'm hearing this and I'm reading what, what everyone is typing in here. I'm going to I'm going to take a leap of faith that what you're typing in here, travel professionals, are your personal passions. These are destinations you particularly uh, enjoy and either uh, are looking forward to visit or frequent frequently, frequent frequently. That's interesting. By the way, Trinita added Hawaii, New England. We have so many wonderful de uh, destinations, and therefore. If it's a destination, an experience that's very personal to you, then perhaps 
it's your niche as well. And, and maybe to help you come up with these ideas, especially as Catherine has just suggested quickly, this is our, our first round of this brainstorming. Um, Catherine, is it fair that the trial press should say, boy, where would, where have I gone? Where would I personally love to go? My dream places, doesn't that help? Oh, totally. And especially where they've been, because they're the expert in that area then. And they know what stood out when they were in wherever it is, Greece or Israel or London or the coast of the Dominican Republic. And what was it that was sort of their aha moment? Like, oh, this is an awesome place to be or this what this is what makes this place so unique. And then that becomes the foundation for the lead magnet. Because if you find it interesting, chances are other people are going to find it interesting too. I love it. I agree. And it also helps us move from features to benefits. If we just say uh, these, if we just simply say these are the top 10 uh, vineyards to visit. Okay, that, that's a feature. That's a fact. It's, it's pretty black and white. But if you can add color to that, if you can immerse the reader or the video because we're going to talk about how to deliver the lead magnets shortly <laughs> in the experience and you put your friends look at me now you put your heart and soul whether it's in writing or whether they're seeing you and you're speaking it into it you're immersing them you're you're using flowery words you're making believe you are there at that time writing this or recording this wouldn't it be great if you could then it sort of comes to life and and it becomes even more alluring right and it's personal because anybody can go and google the top 10 things to see in italy and but what do those top 10 things mean to you why are they special what makes them so unique what's the history behind them what's your history with that and those are things that you want to include in your lead magnet um, so as we're sort of talking through these i hope people are jotting down their own ideas because that's the next step in this we want to brainstorm some ideas based on the destinations based on a couple of the ideas that i threw out and i'd love to hear what your lead magnet titles or topics might be so we Catherine? talked about 10 top hmm? Sorry, quick question, quick yeah. question. Would you advise or how would a travel advisor um, uh, actually survey their uh, followers? Well, let's say if they are a specialist and they know who on their list has has desired or has been or wants to go back to Italy or River Cruise, whatever, Dominican Republic, wherever it may be. Could it be a survey or could they uh, jump into those communities and see what people are talking and asking about? Is that a good way to figure out what it is people are interested if, if we kind of come up dry? Absolutely. Absolutely. Think back on what questions your clients, well, used to ask you back in the good old days, <laughs> what questions they used to ask you. And that could be the foundation for a lead magnet. And like you said, peruse different groups on Facebook and see what the topics are. Um, Pinterest is an awesome opportunity to search by um, keywords and see what's already out there and then how you can make it better. Um, and post on your Facebook page, you know, what's your biggest travel question? Or now Facebook has this Q&A opportunity, so you could always post a Q&A. What's your favorite winery to see in Italy? Or what's your favorite off the beaten path um, destination in Greece? And then that gives you sort of a sense of where people's minds are, what they're already thinking about. And then you add on to that and create your lead magnet based on that. Um, wow. And you can also just do a regular survey, um, survey monkey or whatever, and send that out. My, my thought is part of this lead magnet opportunity is to grow your email list. So if you tap into your existing email list, it may be kind of a small sample of who you'd want to um, reach out to. So using social media, using other platforms might be a good way to sort of broaden your audience a little bit too. Okay, 
Great. Uh, All right, take us to the next step. This is okay. beautiful. So the so my other thoughts on content ideas are um, we think about what people use when they travel. They use gadgets. They probably want to download a playlist or TED Talks to listen to. So maybe you make a list of those, the top five TED Talks for your next trip or the um, essential gadget guide for your next vacation. Or how about a playlist if they're going to Mexico or somebody mentioned the Dominican Republic. What would be a playlist to get you up and excited about going to that destination? So things like that that really would be different but resonate with the destination and with your niche market that you're trying to sell. So yes. in that guide, I gave you some content ideas and now comes the time where we get to brainstorm a little bit. So I'd love you, for everybody listening, to write in the chat box what of those things resonated with you and how you can turn that into a title for your next lead magnet. So maybe it's healthy travel snacks for your next trip with your multi-gen family or healthy travel snacks when you're traveling with kids under 10, um, mm -hmm. something like that. So type those ideas that we sort of uh, touched on, type your ideas, how you would personalize that into the chat box and then Stuart, we can start brainstorming and, and go around um, okay. and talk about what people yeah. are writing in. I, I love it. I mean, and as everybody's typing, I just have to acknowledge that uh, the, just the few ideas that you've generated here, um, all, you know, all the senses, music, I, I never thought of that, a playlist, right, of, of, uh, or TED Talks, you know, bringing in um, uh, other forms of entertainment, education, that they can do beforehand or do while they're there. I mean, the gadget thing is huge. How many how many people are either uncomfortable knowing, well, uh, what should I bring? What could I download? How do I tour? Uh, and, and, and friends, again, as you type in, oh, we got a lot coming in. Um, here's your chance, travel entrepreneurs, to showcase your expertise, to showcase why they should pick you because, and I, I was going to save this to the end, but I'm going to say it now, because the biggest lead magnet of all is, say it, say it, you should be saying me. Right. <laughs> and I'm saying you, you, yeah, I'm talking to you. You are the biggest lead magnet of all. After all, if they don't find you interesting, fun, compelling, fascinating, brilliant, relevant, I'll go someplace else. Right. Okay, let me, right. let me because let me you're my... right. They're buying your personality. They're buying your expertise. Yep, exactly. Yep. So and what do we have? Passion. They want a piece of you. You know, they want a piece of you. All right, here we go. Uh, Michael writes in. I've introduced many clients to Italian opera. Linda says one of my and, and I'm going to read through Catherine and at any time just interrupt me and okay. I'll I'll let's, stop. Let's let's go back to the opera thing because yep. that's fantastic. So what might the name of that lead magnet be? 10 places to see opera that are off the beaten path in Italy, or 10 operas that nobody sees but are worth it. So think about how you could title it that is gonna be so fantastic that people have to have this item. Yeah, compelling, compelling. Yeah. Make yeah. the title compelling. I love it. And and how do you come up with a compelling title if you're if you're not a, a writer, let's say, and you're like, oh, what do I write? Go read, make a list. I have a file folder. I don't know about you, Catherine, of of compelling titles and names of webinars uh, that I I find brilliant. And I have this whole list. Yeah. So whenever I need some uh, encouragement or ideas, I go and I read this list of what other people have come up with. Of you know how to place the words, what to say that you know, and that's that's how I, it helps me be creative. But the other uh, thing that really helps is go to the supermarket and look at all the tabloids. Look at the headlines <laughs> on the tabloids. <laughs> ten ways True. to lose ten pounds in five days, or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, my thought would be, how would I gain ten pounds? That's my <laughs> game. But. Um, <laughs> But go look at those headlines, magazine cover headlines. They're fantastic for developing lead magnet 
ideas and topics. So I, I'm going to read these. We got some great ones coming through. But we had originally, I, I thought this would sort of be our kickoff first half. Are you good staying on with us longer? Because I want you to stay if you can. I mean, we could we could do the whole hour if you're cool with that. Totally up to you, Stuart. I know you had some other content you wanted to cover on your well, own, but up to you. No, I appreciate it. So I, there's a great question that Lynn, who's a boot camper, asked uh, about the single supplements. Uh, uh, Lynn, I promise you we're going to ask you and everybody here and Catherine too, her take on it. But but I'm so grateful that let's just keep rolling forward. So here we go. Linda says, one of mine was 10 tips to stay healthy while traveling. Awesome. I love it. I love it because you've got those 10 tips in your back pocket. And then, you know, you can weave in the snacks. You can weave in, you know, where to find healthy food in an airport. You know, you can just spiral off of that. And, and it's it, it's not just about food. Let me be so bold and tell you, though, but there's things called chair yoga. You yeah. know, if you're waiting in line, if you've got a long flight, there's so many physical things you could do too. little uh, meditation apps, too, to keep you calm, to keep you cool. So I, th there's a lot of places you can go with that. Lynn, yeah. Lynn posts here 10 places to watch the sunset in Greece. Oh, OK. I love it. And yeah. can we get more granular with that, I wonder? Ten places to watch the sunset on Mykonos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, how granular do you want? Where is your next tour going to if you're visiting Mykonos? Well, then there you go. Yep. And where, where to watch them and what to bring along. If you get, get a bottle of this wine, here's what I did. Get some of this cheese, here's what I did and get people thirsty as well. Uh, Linda asked what are TED Talks. So you go ahead and Google TED Talks, Linda. It's going to be a whole new world <laughs> to you because I am addicted to TED Talks, and Catherine yeah. probably is too. They're so inspirational. And mark my words, one day I will do one too. It may be a TEDx, huh? but I'm going to do one. I just know it's in my You'd future. be awesome, Stuart. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Michelle says, best places to photograph in Sydney. So I love that too, because it's very picturesque. Yeah. Uh, and I know, Danny, you're going to find that interesting too, because that's that's Danny's niche. Uh, yeah. Michael writes, if you've been to Rome, Florence, or Venice, you haven't been to Italy. That's a compelling member off the beaten path. Oh, love That's it, compelling. Michael. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Jeanette says, what, what, was the, what was the question again? I have no idea. I'm just going, no. The question was, uh, generate, what, what are some things you have done for lead magnets uh, yeah. or some ideas that have just popped into your head as we're talking? Uh, that's where we're at right now. Linda says she loves the gadget idea. Uh, Karen D says uh, it could be f uh, top food and wine festivals in Italy oh. or in that destination. Wine festivals, yes, because some people really, really, they travel abroad because they want the cultural experience. They want to go to local fairs. I mean, just like if you love doing that here in back home domestically, then I guarantee you that you probably, when you travel, want to go to local events too, festivals. Love it. Brilliant idea. And then you could even spiral off of that because it could be food festivals. It could be wine festivals. It could be music festivals. It could be whatever cultural art festivals. Yep. Um, and, and you can probably go to the local tourism website. Like I know Memphis here, we have a tourism website and it lists yeah. of all the events going on. The yeah. research is, is already done for you. Uh, right. Lynn suggests, 10 best tips for taking photos using your smartphone. Great idea. Great yeah. idea. Uh, Michael says uh, boutique, boutique Tuscan winery. So now we're getting more specific, right? Specific to the destination. And you can come up with a whole series of those uh, to, to specific cities or villages or regions. Um, Lynn says off the beaten path for uh, and Lynn, I have your question because your question has to do with your potential Israel group. I got you covered, Lynn. Uh, off the beaten path for foodies in Israel. And we were supposed to have gone on an Israel trip with a small group of friends. And unfortunately, that's been postponed. And one of the things we were very much interested in 
was the, the food because there's incredible food tours there too of food sampling, you know, and very different from here. So I, 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 lo I love that link. I, I would, I would sign I would up to get that, that link. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's great because it's different, it's unique, and then you could make that for any destination. You know, if it's Israel this time, maybe it's Jordan next time, whatever. And right. maybe it becomes cooking schools. Maybe it becomes um, uh, vegan options in that destination. Yes. You know, you yes. could you could just continue to to brainstorm on that. I, I am loving this because it, it 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 sounds like if you're the travel advisor and this is in your niche, this would be fun. The research would be fun. Yeah. And number two, it absolutely demonstrates your niche. It's one thing to say. Oh, I specialize in. Or I'm an expert in. It's altogether another to to demonstrate it, to showcase it. Well, friends, this does that. Yes. You're not advertising. What you're doing is you're sharing, and it becomes a lead magnet. And I know shortly we're going to switch to the next stage, but let me just read through these real quick to give everyone um, their their airtime to share this because it's great stuff. Uh, Karen says top places to see Andrea Bocelli in 2022. That's cool. Uh, my uh, Karen said, just occurred to me that we could also use the headlines from uh, TRO, Travel Research Online, top festivals, a great American beat. Right. So great place to get headlines is to go to places like TRO. And she's giving examples, great American beaches. So uh, and she's saying maybe we should we should be doing more uh, USA vacations because, you know, be just, you know, situationally. Yeah. Uh, Jeanette says five of the best rums made in the dr there you I, I go i would read that i would read that yeah uh, ramona says do you know about these 10 restaurants off the beaten path in louisiana i would read that too because i'm a foodie and when we go to new orleans we yeah. go off the beaten path to and have some fine wonderful food experiences well, i used to live in new orleans so there are tons of dive restaurants off the beaten path places that, that nobody knows about and you know that word dive to a foodie, oh. you just get all excited, right? Oh. To a non-foodie, it's like, Pfft. you know, I'll go to Applebee's with all due respect <laughs> to Applebee's. But my point is when you use the word dive or um, or joint, I call them a joint. I just call it a joint, right? right? Now, all of a sudden, I'm like, tell me more. I pull up a chair. I want to hear about it. Yeah, because um, it could be a burger joint. It could be a, a barbecue joint. It could yep. be a beer joint you know it could be uh um whatever you know a uh -huh. fajita place i know, you know? i yeah. know i agree all right two more and then and then i'm going to i got a couple of announcements to make and then we're going to move to the next stage Kathy. okay uh, Lori writes top 10 best places to take a selfie ah, make great. Sure it's not high up on any edge of any Ugh. Be careful, but I like your concept, Lori, because so, you're talking again about picturesque and, and selfies opportunities. It's, I okay. like it. So this also came to mind. What about 10 top places to propose? Because I suspect you have some wedding and honeymoon people on the line today. Yes. Yes. So 10 top places to propose, 10 top places to pop the question if you want to you know, be a little more fun about it. Yep. Yep, I love it. So, but boy, this is really fun. And all right, we're, I'm going to give a couple of quick announcements. Stick with us. And, and and what I suggest, friends, while we could do this all day, is get together with a few of your colleagues or friends and have a brainstorming session. Go nuts. No rules. I love doing that. You just you just you you blue sky. That's what I like to call it. You know, and when you take any rules or constraints off and you come up with one brilliant idea out of 50. Well, there you go. There you go. All right. A couple of quick announcements here. Our next group sales power hour. I'm going to be recording on February 18th. If you'd like to be in the audience like we have here as a guest. If you're not in Group Sales Bootcamp, just send me a note or uh, join the Group Sales Success Summit Facebook group, and I'll give you an invite to it. There you go, because I'm a nice guy, and I want you here. But Britton Frost, Britton Frost is going to be my next guest, and she is the host of the podcast Avid Travel. Britton is a travel journalist specializing in small ship cruises on oceans and rivers. So make sure if you can't, not the audience, that you hear that and the podcast. 
Um, if you happen to be with Virtuoso, the first of four presentations, uh, training, uh, uh, customized training seminars are doing starts Feb 17. So if you're with Virtuoso, I want to see you, or at least hear you, or at least know you're in the audience because it's virtual. <laughs> uh, the good news is my boot camp live which is a, a brand new program. Some of you have heard about Group Sales Bootcamp Live uh, is uh, in March and June. There's a handout here. And if you subscribe to my this podcast, I will give you a coupon code. Why? Because I'm a nice guy and I want to save you some money. And the value is rid ridiculous, ridiculous. So I hope that you will be in the audience for one of my two Bootcamp Live uh, mega online uh, spectaculars. I tell you, Catherine, I love using adjectives. Thank goodness. If there was no excl exclamation points or adjectives, I'd be, I just, I would just nap all day. And if we couldn't um, talk with our hands, we'd never be able to say anything. I know. Look at that. <laughs> I can't, I'm going to sit on my hand here. And uh, thank you so many. In the, there's a bunch of you in the audience here who are coming to my mastermind with Mike Marshev. It, and Catherine, after two cancellations in 2020, it is happening at the Grand at Moon Palace, March 2 and March 6. So very excited. And I share this with you, child professionals, to show you that I'm not sitting on my hands. Catherine's not sitting. We're doing stuff. And, and now I've got my first business trips coming up. And right after that, I'm going, I don't know if anybody here is with Nexion as their, as their host agency group, but the group sales summit is still on at Moon Palace going back down there in April. So you're going to get the best of my best also when it comes to groups. So I just had a, I had to put that out there and, and we're going to transition back to you, Catherine, but I, I want to uh, use a quote that you have on your website and on your infographic that I hope everybody's going to download, print out and study. And the quote is knowledge without action is like no knowledge at all. I so friends, that quote. while we're sitting here having these conversations, come up with ideas, whether, whether you're here in the audience, whether you're running and jogging and listening to the download, do something, <laughs> do something, <laughs> you mean do, do one little thing, it can't fail, it just, it just can't, right, and, and so I want to encourage you to take what, what Catherine is sharing here and make it happen and come back and tell us, tell her. We want to know. All right, take it away, Catherine. Let's go to the next step. Okay, so going back to the, the do something, in the handout, there is a slide to write down some of your top ideas because we've okay. generated tons of them. Write them down. I don't know about you, Stuart, but whenever I write something down, it's way more likely to happen, and I'll be able to remember it. Um, and go back and tweak yep. it or brainstorm on it as well. So okay. keep writing those things down. The other tip that I want to throw out there for naming your lead magnet or thinking about topics for your lead magnet is the negative side of things. What to avoid ah. doing, okay? okay? What to avoid, what not to miss. Because some people tune into that negative thing because they go, oh gosh, I can't miss that, so I better read this thing or what to avoid doing on a long flight, or um, what to avoid missing in whatever yes. destination. Brilliant. So that kind of to turning that around, flipping it over can help as well. You know, I really love that. I use that a lot, Catherine, in, in a lot of my writing and teaching. Sometimes we learn more when, when, when we're told what, <laughs> not to do the mistakes to avoid because sometimes we don't know that what we're doing is a regular habit of practice is not really the most ideal scenario and yeah. uh, and, and again coming back to what I tell travel advisors their their purpose in life is number one to add value and convenience so your first concepts of lead magnets was of things that add value and convenience right and number two is uh, reduce stress and risk. So now your second concept is putting out ideas, how to reduce stress and risk, things to avoid. Exactly. Take away those pain points. You know, that's the other thing people look at. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So now that we have all these great ideas and what we're going to put together as a okay. lead magnet, 
How are we gonna do that? What form does it take? Because now we're gonna talk about the building process. So we've got tons of different ways you can put this down in writing. One of it might be as simple as that handout that I offer today, which is a PowerPoint presentation that you can print out. So it's a PDF of a PowerPoint presentation. So you can make it look as fun as you want, use your brand colors, put some information at the end that people know where to find you. You could also make it a PDF of a Word document. So whatever you can do to make it something that's downloadable, because it has to be easy to deliver to people and people have to be able to access it easily. For a while, people were putting together these huge eBooks. Now, I don't know about you, but I've downloaded a bunch of eBooks. Have I read them all? No, it's too much stuff to read. So I like short bite-sized chunks of information. And that's what a lead magnet is. If you have an ebook that you've already put together, you can break that ebook down into something more bite sized. So you could maybe have, maybe you showcased five key points in your, your ebook. Break that down into five different pieces of content. So that content could be the downloadable PDF of a Word document, could be a downloadable PowerPoint slide deck. It could be an infographic, you know, those cool things that you see all the time on Pinterest that lists, you know, the five top reasons to do whatever. That's the perfect downloadable bite-sized, snack-sized delivery method. You could also do it as a, as a blog post and make it a gated blog post that they have to give you their email address to read this blog. It could be a video, it could be a video series, it could be a podcast. Whatever method or medium you're comfortable working in. Now I know Danny shoots a bunch of videos and he's also put together an infographic that he uses as a um, lead magnet. So you could put it in a variety of different mediums because sometimes people like to read stuff, sometimes they like to listen to stuff. Sort of like your podcast, Stuart. You do the podcast and then you do the video portion of it as well. Yep. So yep. think of as many um, different methods that people can um, access this and then choose one. Choose one that you're comfortable in. So if you find you want to do an infographic, do an infographic. See how it goes. If it doesn't work well, then make it into a video or make it into a, a Word document instead. So this part of, of sort of what to build, the formats to use, really depends on where you're comfortable and where you think your audience is going to be comfortable um, getting the, their information from. Yes, and I... I... I'm glad you brought that up. I just made a note on that. It, it, number one is, of course, the, your comfort, you know, what you're comfortable doing. And, and if you've always wanted to do a video and you're uncomfortable, well, make it your new comfort zone. You know, now's your shot to start. And it, it can't be bad. <laughs> you know, it's only going to get better. And people love seeing uh, your, your beautiful smiling face. Just smile, make believe you're just having a conversation. You can make it 15 seconds long or 60 seconds. No pressure, no editing, do a Facebook Live. So you're really under pressure to, to <laughs> just, just do it. And it could be a growth opportunity. And the other part, Catherine, I, I want to just enunciate for our, our listeners here is, is where, where mm -hmm. to share it. And it's important that while you may be comfortable, maybe you have no comfort level on pictures at all. You don't, you don't get it. But maybe maybe this is so picturesque, maybe this is so perfect for Pinterest, and maybe so many of your followers are either already there or that's where they hang out. It's time to learn a new social marketing tool. Sometimes you got to learn something new if that's the audience you need, that you want, right? Right, exactly. And maybe the medium that they want as well. You know, you mentioned that maybe they're not comfortable on video, but you find that your audience loves video. Well, good time to get really good at video. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it could be a voiceover. It doesn't have to be if you're afraid being on video, just record your voice. I mean, 
my my Mac has a quick voice recorder, whatever it's called, and it does it's digital. It's perfect. It's magnificent. Get a fairly decent mic, record something, show some graphics, and you're yeah. done. In fact, you can even read that list to people if they prefer to consume it that way. Exactly. And you can create like a slideshow video of the top restaurants to go to in Cancun and then do the voiceover on top of that slideshow. Yep. So many different ways that you can create that content. Or you could even do a slideshow of different pictures of those great beaches or the places to propose or whatever your thing is and then do the voiceover with it. And then maybe even create a downloadable list of that as well for those people yes. who like to listen to stuff as well as those people that like to read stuff. Yep, and take it home. Question for you. Yeah. How do you feel, Catherine, uh, when, when you go to a website and you see an offer? Uh, uh, here I have a list of the top 20 of whatevers. And to get the first three free, give me your email and, and – um, uh, actually, we'll give you the first three now. Here they are. But if you want the other seven or the other 17, I need your email address. I, I get that all the time. And I have to think, do I really want to so sign up or subscribe? But what are your thoughts on that? I, I kind of like the idea of giving them a free sample at first. Um, but to me, the goal is for us to collect email addresses. Yes. So giving something away. For free is nice, but what are you going to get back from it? How much time have you spent creating this carrot? Do you really want to give it away for free? If your goal is to build your email list, if your goal is to get new clients, I, I would definitely ask for their email address yeah. right off the yep. bat. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I agree. We just need to be bold and we need to do it. Right. And, and we need to put out something that's really worthwhile that's going to grab their attention. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. So here's what we're going to do. We've got like, uh, believe it or not, 12 minutes left. Oh, my I, I, we're, we're going to pivot for a minute, everybody. Pay attention now because I want your feedback. Here. I'm going to read this a uh, little bit of a dilemma from Lynn here. And I, I and I'm going to read your answers and then. We're going to come back, Catherine, and uh, knock it out of the park, bring it home for us with the, with the other um, elements of the successful lead magnet. Uh, and he, he, I'm going to read this from Lynn, right? I have an affinity group going, hopefully, to Israel on a culinary tour next year. It's been postponed twice already due to the pandemic, naturally. Yesterday, I received the updated pricing from the supplier, which is an Israeli tour operator, and my Pied Piper is complaining about the price for the single supplement. And if she asks anybody else ever encountered this, and I can assure you, everyone here who's done groups before has encountered this, but any suggestions about how to deal with it? Personally, this is Lynn speaking, I see nothing wrong with what they are charging. I, all right, audience, I want to hear what you've got to share if you've had this experience. And if, we, if I don't have time to read all of it, I promise you I'll post it in our Facebook chat so you can see what the responses are. Um, I, I'm going to give you my quick thoughts on it, and which is uh, it is what it is. <laughs> and nobody, you know, I'm sorry. You didn't make the rule. You didn't make the policy. Be confident and don't give them any thoughts that, oh, I'll go back and try to negotiate. I'm really sorry. No. It's just the way it is on almost every travel product. It, it, you know, it's because they're giving away, you know, one whole room that's usually for two people. Maybe they can find a friend if that's not an option. Maybe they could, I hate to use the word downgrade, to, but find something that's the minimum level that's acceptable for a single that would just end up being a wash, costing them less. It may not be the ideal room they want on the ship or in the hotel, but at least they're paying less. And this is policy. This is this is the way these businesses run their business. It's not a decision you have made, Lynn. Does that make sense, Catherine? What I mean it makes total sense. Yeah. Like I used to work for a tour operator, and we all know what goes into pricing a single supplement. And yes. it's um, that's just the way it is. It is right. But and now on occasion, you mentioned, you mentioned also yeah. having them maybe find a, a friend or a guest to go with them. I mean, think yep. about that. That would add an extra person and add yep. extra revenue to their bottom line. Yep. Yep, absolutely. 
All right. I'm, I'm not going to wait. I see comments coming in, but uh, Karen says uh, it is what it is. Tell them to go find a friend to travel with. Uh, <laughs> but the, the whole idea, the most important thing, and the other comments, we're not going to have time for them. I'm going to post them in the group. But uh, it's, it's important that you stay confident and that they understand this, this is not your rule. Don't put the blame. OK, and you never want to give credit or discredit to the supplier because you don't want them losing faith in it. But that th this is this is traditional. This is standard. And if they prefer not to offer single supplements, then it won't even be offered. Or maybe you could do a, a, a matchup. You know, uh, how many conferences have you been to? They say, listen, if you if, you, if it's OK, we'll, we'll match you up with somebody of like minded. Yeah. How about that? Sometimes some people will agree to that and maybe. You, you, your group leader will agree to that because at the end of the day, Lynn, what's most important is that your pipe pipe or your group leader is 100% on board, not 99. They can't be 99% on board. That 1% could be, could, could put the kibosh on the whole project. You need them all in. All right, here we go. We got to get right back on track because I know you got more to share here. Yeah. Uh, Ka uh, Cash, uh, Karen is loving this. He's, this is great. Thank you. Uh, Jenny says, how do we register for a boot camp live? If you're in boot camp, don't worry about it, Jenny. You're in boot camp. I got you covered. Sheila says, uh, repeat the name of the Feb 17 virtuoso training. I don't remember the name of it. It's virtuoso sales training <laughs> featuring <laughs> yours truly, Stu Cohen. So uh, give me a call or contact virtuoso. I got you covered. Um, Karen says, Sam Horn just did a TED talk that says, someday isn't the day of the week. Someday isn't the day of the week. Going back to your anonymous quote, which is. Knowledge which is without knowledge. action is like no knowledge at all. Uh, Kyle says, I like quizzes or assessments. Monica says, I'm working on creating a quiz. Uh, let's see. Um, Han says, uh, Catherine, what platform do folks use for their email list? I'm using MailChimp. Any suggestions? MailChimp does offer landing pages. Somebody else is also asking about click funnels. So I'm going to turn it back over to you because I want to make sure we have seven minutes left. You have time to answer these and to finish your presentation. Okay. Let's talk about what people have asked about already, how to market it. Um, because not only do you have to create the thing and like if you're doing an infographic you could be creating that in PicMonkey or Canva or something as easy as that so once you have it created then you get to market it and ClickFunnels is incredible it is like the Mercedes-Benz of funnel creation I do ClickFunnels and let me tell you there's a learning curve that goes with it right. but it is phenomenal. In fact, in that downloadable guide that I showed uh, that's in the chat box, there is an example of a funnel that I've created in ClickFunnels. So you can see what it looks like. Go ahead and, and poke around in there. Um, I'm giving away a, a lead magnet that's about getting more eyeballs on your video. So you can walk through the landing page for it, the how you download the guide, and the thank you page that comes up. So in addition to ClickFunnels, there's also a company called Lead Pages. There's also ConvertKit. All of these tools that you might want to use, they package everything together. So you have an opportunity to create this landing page with them, put your thing your carrot in there to be downloaded and then they also have the tools where you can collect people's email addresses send them a thank you note deliver their their freebie and then send them an email sequence after that so you're nurturing this lead and keeping them interested yes. so there's a bunch of those kinds of tools out there find the one that you like the best um, the reason I chose ClickFunnels was because it had everything there. Um, ClickFunnels also does a 30-day um, challenge where every day there's a lesson, something you have to do. And it's, it's a ton of work, but believe me, it's worth it at the end. Um, so that's available. ConvertKit has um, all kinds of tutorials that you can listen to, lead pages, same thing. Okay. Um, so those tools are out there. You know, Stuart, you turned me on to Jot Forms a couple years ago. And yes. Jot Forms is like a really simple way to start building a funnel. 
because you can you can have the landing page, you can have the thank you page, you can deliver your thing, and it even collects email addresses for you. So yes. if you really want to start bare bones, JotForm is like twenty dollars a month. Simple way to start. Yes, and that is intuitive. You can learn it. Uh, I'm always learning new things. It's really cool. Uh, I do. I still use that form. Uh, Kyle here recommends if you want, because I know Kyle, you've done a lot of research into this. You've asked me this a lot, a lot of times, and I can only share with, with what my experience is. By the way, I use Send in Blue. Send in Blue. I moved from Mailchimp to Send in Blue because Mailchimp got ridiculously expensive for little old me. Um, Kyle says, if you want good email segmentation and marketing, active campaign is good. Deliverability is key to an email platform. And then Kyle goes on to say, for simplicity, he's saying uh, travel agents are using Flowdesk, F-L-O-D-E-S-K. Mm -hmm. uh, I had heard of it. I'm not familiar with it. So yeah, thank I've you for sharing. It looks very um, intuitive. Um, yeah. yeah. But and that's the key. Wanna... Go ahead. Yeah, that's the key. You know, some of you may be um, really into this and, and would dive into JotForm to get creative and create your own thing because there's autoresponders, but you you got to test it. You got to make sure it's right. And yeah. some of you are not that comfortable. And that's when you hire a pro to set it up. Sometimes you got to invest in this stuff. And, and if your specialty is travel and you stick to your specialty and you hire the pro to get it done for you. That's just, that's what you got to do, but, but don't wait, get it done. Take action. Yeah, exactly. And it's got to be um, presentable. It's got to be really professional because that's people's first impression of you. So it's, it's got to be good. Speaking yeah. of first impressions, I just have to tell you, uh, make sure you have two or three other people proofread it. Oh yeah. Trust me. Because, you, you know, one little itty bitty typo or something that just doesn't make sense, yeah. they're going to go, if this person can't spell uh, Florence, you can, I'm not going to pay you to take me there. So, you know, little things like that, just have it checked by other and other couple of the sets of eyeballs, right? Yeah. And, you know, the other thing is make it sure it looks like you. So use your brand colors, use words and tone that you would want to use. So if you're going to have somebody from Fiverr or Upworks write the content for you, make sure it sounds like you go back and read over it again and make sure you also include your contact information. So many people forget about that. They put together this great lead magnet. And people don't have a way to connect with them. Yeah. So make sure that that's there too. That's it. And friends, if you're still using, I'm not going to look at you if this is you. See, I, I, this is a judgment-free zone, but I'm just saying. If you're still using an info at or a support at, really? I use some giant conglomeration you can't give out your own. I, it's fine if you have your, I have my own personal email address and I have a business email address. Stuart at StuartLloydCohen.com. Put your name there. Why? Because they're buying you. Remember, you're the lead magnet. Sorry, I just had to put that yeah. in. And that's that's great advice. Um, my name is kind of long. People can't always spell Catherine with a C and Heeg with two E's and no, no E on the end. So sometimes <laughs> I put social at CMS speaking. Mm -hmm. But they, uh, then they also have a chance to see who I am in the lead magnet because a lot of times I'll put my picture in there. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. We've got a minute left, actually less than that, but I just want to read this. Karen says, encourage agents to offer a lead magnet at the end of any Zoom meeting too. Yeah. Every Zoom meeting that you're doing, uh, Karen says she forgot to do that last year. That's great. Um, Kyle says, need a CTA on, on lead magnet. CTA on lead magnet. Oh, call to action. Oh, yes. Call to action. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Next step. It always needs to be a next step. Uh, Lori says, highly recommend you hire a professional editor to clean it up for you. So support that local editor. Kyle uses Grammarly Pro mm -hmm. to check it out. Right, parting words, Catherine, parting words and invitations, and then we got to go. 
Okay, this has been awesome, you guys. I love the interaction here. If you need more help with these kinds of things, want to understand the tools or the process better, my contact information is in the handout. Please get in touch with me. This is the kind of stuff that I just love doing. So reach out. I've also got on my team a graphic designer who's helped Danny out, and they can help, or she can help you create uh, a lead magnet if you want to go that route as well. So Beautiful. that's uh, I'm throwing that out there as a special for you. Um, and get in touch with me. Throw some ideas by. I'm happy to brainstorm. Catherine, this has been. Exquisite. I mean, that's the first word that pops in, an adjective pops into mind. Thank you for sharing your expertise so freely with these advisors. I, I can't even begin to tell you how grateful I am for this time. The hour flew by. Remember to download uh, the couple of handouts there. Get in touch with Catherine. Get in touch with me. I wish you good health and everybody be well. Bye. Thank you. Bye.